Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. I'm Dr. Andrew Kirkendall from the Moffitt Cancer Center. Monday Morning Joe is a quick-hitting, coffee-talk-style five-episode series on the latest and greatest in advanced systemic mastocytosis with associated myeloid neoplasms. Please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and make sure notifications are turned on to be prompted when new episodes are released. Today we're going to discuss some of the factors that influence prognosis for patients with systemic mastocytosis and associated hematologic neoplasms. So when we think about systemic mastocytosis, what, what do we think about as far as prognosis goes? Well, you know, first and foremost, I would say the majority of patients who are diagnosed have indolent systemic mastocytosis. And as you can see here, patients often exhibit a overall relatively similar life expectancy compared to age match controls with this disease. Now, this isn't to say they experience similar quality of life, because obviously a indolent systemic mastocytosis can frequently cause problematic symptoms. But in the realm of advanced systemic mastocytosis, the survival is quite a, a different picture. Here you can see that patients with aggressive systemic mastocytosis and those with associated hematologic neoplasms have quite a poor prognosis with a median survival that seems to be less than five years. So what factors affect prognosis? We often talk about the KIP mutation as the driving force behind the disease of systemic mastocytosis. But one of the factors that affects the prognosis is really how many of our cell lines are impacted by the disease. When we look at uh, KIP mutations and we see a high allele burden, oftentimes we, we refer to that as involving uh, multiple lineages or multi-lineage involvement. And what does that mean? Well, that means the KIT mutation is not just associated with mast cells. It also may be associated with other myeloid cells as well, really involving proliferation of a number of different lines of cells and causing uh, more of a, a higher burden of disease, more dysfunction of the organs where it's involved. This also is associated with reduced response to cytoreductive therapy. Frequently what we find in, in these cases is that patients often have additional mutations involving other genes, suggesting a more complex uh, disease process. Some of those mutations occur in genes such as TET2, RAS, SRSF2, ASX01, RUNX1, JAK2. Patients with SRSF2, RUNX1, and ASX01 mutations, so-called SAR mutations, have been shown to have a significantly reduced overall survival rate compared to if they only had the D816V mutation. The presence of organomegalies and lymphadenopathy are also associated with reduced overall survival in patients with systemic mastocytosis. Now, frequently when we see these complex molecular profiles, uh, this isn't just indicative of a poor prognosis, but often it really clues us into the fact that there is an associated hematologic neoplasm. These mutations are certainly not specific to systemic mastocytosis. And when you talk about mutations in TET2, ASX01, SRSF2, RUNX1, these are very, very common across the myeloid spectrum. Frequently, you'll see that Mutations such as ASX01 and SRF2 are associated with inferior prognosis in other disease states as well. And so it's not surprising that when found in the presence of systemic mastocytosis, that again, they exert this negative influence. In advanced SM, the median overall survival of poor risk karyotype patients is also significantly shorter than in patients with good risk or normal karyotype suggesting that the, the, the genetic dysfunction and the molecular complexity is really associated with an overall poor prognosis across the board. So what else predicts lower overall survival in these patients? Well, there's a few clinical factors as far as, and patient-specific factors that, that certainly play a role. If you think about things like age, as well as low blood counts, anemia, thrombocytopenia, Leukocytosis certainly suggests a more aggressive disease. Elevated serum tryptase, beta-2 macroglobulin, alkaline phosphatase have been implicated as having more uh, systemic involvement and, and a higher burden of disease and perhaps a worse overall prognosis. A high allele burden of the KIT mutation may indicate multi-lineage involvement and overall worsening prognosis as well. And as we mentioned, additional somatic mutations certainly convey molecular complexity that they can be, be a very, quite a challenge with this disease. And why do we really try to understand different prognoses of patients? I think one, obviously we want to be able to counsel patients and talk to them about what this disease means in their specific situation. We want to be able to provide stratification and classification that gives the patients a, a better understanding of their disease process. It also helps us from a therapeutic side of things as far as what different therapeutic options do we have available to us. Should we be thinking about symptomatic-based approaches, or should we be thinking about uh, more myelosuppressive or cytoreductive approaches, or even things like transplant? So what are some take-home points here? Systemic mastocytosis with an associated hematologic neoplasm has a very poor prognosis. Mutations in ASX01, SRSF2, and RUNX1 are associated with a worse prognosis, and this prognosis may be changing in the era of KIT inhibitors. Thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube page. 
Clinicians, nurses, and pharmacists can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic areas. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.